hour. But we start tonight with a mystery. A mystery that's unfolding alongside the two major political scandals of the summer. It's a mystery that concerns this house at 133 C Street Southeast in Washington, D.C. I'm calling it a house because that's what it looks like to me, and people do live there. But if you consult this building's financial paper trail, you will find that it's actually considered to be a church. That designation makes C Street a convenient tax-free haven for the secretive organization that runs it, an organization known as The Family. It also makes for some awkward tax and income questions for the at least five, probably seven members of Congress who live at the house in exchange for what appears to be substantially below market rent. As explained by our guest last night, Jeff Charlotte, who secretly infiltrated the family to write a book about them, the C Street house is a former convent. It's used as a sort of subsidized, really upscale dorm for members of Congress who are associated with this powerful, poorly understood religious group. The family and the house at C Street have ended up reluctantly in the headlines now because of the two major politician sex scandals that are embroiling the Republican Party this summer and that have taken two of their reported 2012 presidential hopefuls out of political contention. It's embattled Nevada Senator John Ensign lives at the C Street house. The husband of Senator Ensign's mistress says that prominent members of the family, this religious group, including the sons of the group's founder, as well as other members of Congress who live at C Street, were both aware of Ensign's secret affair and were involved in his efforts to pay off the mistress and her family as the affair was on again, off again ending. Republican Senator Tom Coburn lives at C Street with Ensign. He has said he encouraged Ensign to end the affair, but he has denied the allegation that he specifically encouraged Senator Ensign to pay the mistress off to the tune of millions of dollars. South Carolina Governor Mark Sanford mentioned C Street by name in his long public statement of regret about his affair with a woman in Argentina. Did your wife and your family know about the affair before the trip to Argentina? Yes. Are you, for how we, long? We, 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 we've, we've, been, we've been working through this thing for about the last five months. Um, I've been to... A lot of different, I was part of a group called C Street uh, when I was in Washington. It was a, uh, believe it or not, a Christian Bible study. Some folks that asked of members of Congress hard questions that um, I think were very, very important. And uh, I've been working with them. Hard questions. Uh, Governor Sanford said he was working with C Street somehow about his affair for months. While the affair was ongoing, while it was still secret and while Governor Sanford continued to lie about it publicly. This is the first point about C Street and the family that makes the group more than just a cameo appearance in both of these sex scandals. In both instances, these powerful family values preaching conservative politicians who were themselves having adulterous affairs say now that they disclosed those affairs to other members of Congress and other people affiliated with this secretive religious group for a long time while the affairs continued and while they were kept secret from the world at large. This organization was allowed to know, but nobody, was, nobody else was. Zach Womp of Tennessee is a Republican member of Congress who says he has lived in the C Street House for 12 years. Today he told the Knoxville News Sentinel that the members of Congress who live there are sworn to secrecy. Quoting from the News Sentinel, the C Street residents have all agreed they won't talk about their private living arrangements, Womp said, and he intends to honor that pact. I hate it that John Ensign lives in the house, and this happened because it opens up all of these kinds of questions, Womp said. But he said, I'm not going to be the guy who goes out and talks. When you start looking into this organization and its members' oaths to secrecy and fidelity to one another, that I'm not going to be the one who talks here theme looms very large. But last year, when Jeff Charlotte's book about the family first came out in hardback, the resultant buzz around the secrecy and high-level connections of the family and the C Street house spurred NBC's Andrea Mitchell to obtain sermons of the group's longtime leader, Doug Coe, in order to find out more about what this group's agenda might be. Here's some of what she found. I've seen pictures of the young men in the Red Guard. They would bring in this young man's mother, he would take a 
axe and cut her head off. They have to put the purposes of the Red Guard ahead of their father, mother, brother, sister, and their own life. That was a covenant, a pledge. That's what Jesus said. That's what Jesus said? Here's more from the same sermon. Jesus said, you have to put me before other people. And you have to put me before yourself. Hitler, that was a demand to be in the Nazi party. You have to put the Nazi party and its objectives ahead of your own life and ahead of other people. Again, the man speaking here is Doug Coe. He's the leader of the group, the family, that runs the secretive C Street house that features in the sex scandals of both John Ensign and Mark Sanford. Doug Coe describing the group's mission here in this next clip through his interpretation of the life and words of Jesus. One of the things he said is, if any man comes to me and does not hate his father, mother, brother, sister, and his own life, he can't be a disciple. So I don't care what other qualifications you have. If you don't do that, you can't be a disciple of Christ. If you don't hate your father, mother, brother, sister, you can't be a disciple of Christ. Every American's faith is his or her own business. It's our constitutional inheritance as Americans, that there's no religious test for public office, there's no official religion in this country, and every American has a right to believe or not believe, to worship or not worship, or uh, as he or she sees fit. Religion is a private matter in this country. And religion is the organizing principle of many, many powerful interests in the United States, including this one very connected, sworn to secrecy, ministry only to the powerful that has had a key role in how two major Republican sex scandals have unspooled this summer, that has a theology of power that is poorly understood and cites Hitler a lot, and that currently houses at least seven members of Congress in what it calls a church. Joining us now once again is Jeff Charlotte, who lived among this group as part of the research for his book, The Family, The Secret Fundamentalism at the Heart of American Power, which is now out in paperback. Jeff, thanks very much for coming back on the show tonight. I really appreciate it. Hi, Rachel. Thanks for having me back. I realized when we finished our interview last night, there were more questions about the connection between this theology and these politics that I, I really wanted to ask you. Um, and when I, when I asked you last night how a group like the family could essentially sanction John Ensign putting his mistress's son on the Republican Party payroll, you said essentially that this group would be solely focused on looking out for John Ensign, dealing with it internally. Well, it now seems like a big part of the way Ensign responded to the scandal was by spreading a lot of money around. So I wanted to ask you to talk to me a little bit about wealth and financial power and how that fits into the theology of this group. Well, to understand the family's approach to wealth, it's a good place to start is, is their own label for themselves. They like to call themselves the Christian Mafia at times. Uh, and they mean this uh, in the sense of um, money moving kind of quietly behind the scenes. As David Coe, one of the leaders of the group, the son of the man we just saw, and also uh, John Ensign's spiritual counselor, we now know, um, uh, as David Coe uh, explained it uh, to me uh, a, a few years ago, if money moves around behind the scenes, through what they call the man-to-man -man financial method, um, then we are able to sort of maintain this veneer of privacy. And that this is very important because when you're dealing with members of the family, these guys have been chosen by God for leadership. And what the family is going to do is in some ways almost play the role of consigliore as fixers for these guys. So when I heard about the ensign money, that uh, makes sense as a kind of thing that they might be comfortable with. But you've got to pull it out into sort of a, a broader picture. Doug Coe, the leader of the group, um, uh, has said, he says, I, I loan or give money uh, to, to all sorts of people, or I have my friends do so. Now, Coe uh, takes no salary many years. Um, all the money is sort of moving through this man method. Um, and when you apply that, to